Dakota power and Great River energy. The North Dakota chapter of Concerned Women for America. The Expressway Inn and Suites, where a good night's rest costs less. And the Peacock Gallery. It's time to get started. Another hour of the legislature today is on the air. This is Dale Wetzel. This is the Legislature Today radio program. We're coming to you from the Peacock Alley American Bar and Grill in downtown Bismarck, which these days looks like a giant snow fort. I mean, you would not believe the uh, snow piles around uh, the downtown of big, white, wet snow, uh, perfect for building snowmen and rolling into balls and throwing at each other. Uh, it's uh, quite an adventure to find a parking place downtown and and to get along some of the streets because there is a lot of snow on the streets and you basically have to follow wheel tracks and and uh, it can get very uh, interesting uh, trying to navigate some of the streets here. Uh, on the first half hour of our show, we're going to be speaking to a speaker, actually the House Speaker and two former House Speakers. We have Representative Bill Devlin, who is the current House Speaker. He is a Republican from uh, Finley, North Dakota in the east central part of the state. We also have with us Representative Skip Drovdahl of Arnegard. He is uh, he represents a extremely large uh, district in south or western North Dakota. Uh, goes from Williston, uh, the south of Williston, all the way to the South Dakota border. And we also have with us uh, Representative Bill Kretschmar, a Republican from Venturia, who represents a large rural district in south central North Dakota. Uh, we're going to be talking about what it's like to be Speaker of the House, the challenges of that job, and uh, hopefully we've got some, uh, some funny stories to uh, coax out of our, our guests here. Uh, first of all, let's talk about what went on in the legislature today, and the answer is uh, pretty much nothing. Uh, there was no meeting of the legislature today. It was canceled because of the snowstorm and the because of the difficulty that some folks were going to have uh, getting back into town from the weekend. We had uh, almost 18 inches of snow in Bismarck alone, and the Capitol was closed until noon for everyone, including employees and, and legislators. Uh, there were a, maybe, a, when I checked uh, in the mid-afternoon, there were maybe uh, two dozen legislators uh, in the Capitol this afternoon. All of the conference committees were uh, canceled today. There were, I think, 20 that were scheduled to meet. Also, we had no House or Senate floor sessions, so uh, we didn't have any uh, legislative action today. We hope to resume uh, normal business uh, tomorrow with conference committees and uh, House and Senate uh, floor action. Tomorrow will be day 67 of the legislature, and uh, the North Dakota Constitution limits the legislature to 80 days of meetings every two years. And if the 80th day... Yeah, if, if the legislature continues to work on weekdays only uh, up until the end and, and uh, the, the only days that are used uh, for actual House and Senate business are legislative days, uh, we will finish the set. Well, the 80th day would arrive on Friday, May the 3rd. And hopefully, uh, I think everyone hopes that we'll uh, get, uh, get the legislature's work completed before then. But uh, the absolute uh, maximum at this point is... Friday, uh, May the 3rd. Uh, we'll get to our, our show now. Uh, we're going to be speaking, as I mentioned, to the current House Speaker, uh, Representative Bill Devlin. He's a Republican from Finley. And two former speakers, uh, Representative Bill Kretschmar, a Republican from Venturia, who was a speaker in the 1989 session, and also the speaker during the 2011 session, Representative uh, David Skip Drovdahl of uh, Arnegard, a Republican. Um, in the, in the, since 1983, we've only had one Democratic uh, House Speaker because the Speaker of the House is a member of the majority party. The Republicans have had the majority in the, in the North Dakota House since the 1983 session. In the 1983 session, the Speaker was named... Um, uh, Pat, uh, uh, Tish Kelly, Patricia Kelly, her, 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 she was known as Tish Kelly. Uh, she was a Democrat from Fargo. She was in the House at the time. Later, she moved to the Senate. Um, Representative Devlin, why did you want to be Speaker? Well, Dale, it, you know, I've, I've served since uh, 97 with a four-year gap. And, and uh, you know, as I think my legislative career is probably running over, I felt it was a 
very interesting job to do. Uh, you know, it's, it's quite an honor for to be elected by your peers to that position. Um, I, I talked to Representative Drubdahl and, and others that have done it, uh, and they encouraged me to run for it. Um, it it's been a very interesting, uh, very interesting opportunity for me. What is it like to be the speaker? What do you do? Mostly the speaker's job is manage the floor session, make sure the bills are getting through the floor session, conference committees are being appointed. Um, at this at this stage, we're probably doing more in conference committee than we are actually bills on the floor. But, you know, as they come out of conference committee, we have to take them up and get them passed or failed, whatever the case may be. Um, yeah, it's, it's mostly management of the floor session to make sure that it moves smoothly. What role do you take in appointing conference committees? The conference committees are normally appointed by the ch chairmen of the various committees with a little input, I'm sure, from the majority and minority leaders in the legislature. And essentially what the speaker does is announce them is essentially what they do. That's their involvement. So, Can you tell me what is a conference committee and what is its purpose? Conference committee is essentially when you have disagreements between the House and Senate, you take three members from each side or each chamber and uh, try to come up with some kind of agreement. And, uh, you know, one side or both sides will give a little bit and uh, you bring it back to the various chambers and, and approve the legislation or defeat the legislation. Okay, you're sitting up in the front of the House chamber and your, your position's kind of elevated and you have the whole House of Representatives in front of you. What is that like to sit up there and look out and have, have the House of Representatives in front of you? Well, it, it's, it's an interesting perspective. In, in past years, I sat in the very back row. You, you get a different view from the front of everybody than you do from the back. But, you know, it, it's been an extremely rewarding job. And Representative Drubdahl told me that going into it. And uh, it, it has been. It, you see some, uh, um, I don't know, interesting things. But, I mean, you, you're, you're making sure that everybody is at least paying attention enough. And if they aren't, you know, you want to... If there's a lot of chatter on the floor, you might have to ask people to quiet down when somebody's being spoke. But it doesn't happen very often. The, the legislators, I'm sure, in both chambers, in particular the House, are very pers respectful of the process and, uh, and uh, allow it to move forward. Do you ever get bored when someone's speaking? I do not. I can't speak for others. But, you know, you're not, it's different for a speaker because you're not in committees. This is the first session I haven't been involved in the human service or political subs in my particular case. And, you know, so many of the bills that you're hearing on the fl floor being explained, you might have read them. But, you know, you don't know all the particulars. So, I, you know, I'm listening pretty intently to know how I'm actually going to vote on it. So oh, I don't think boredom has ever entered into my mind up there at all. It's, it's, been, uh, it's been a learning process. Um. What is it like to, I mean, you're, you're sitting up there. How do, you, how do you know who wants to speak? Could you just, I, mean, I understand you have some electronics in front of you, and can there, you just explain there, what those yes, are? There, there's a couple electronic boards up there, but essentially anybody that, that uh, wants to speak keys that their speak button at their desk, and, and they come up in a list electronically, and I just take them in the order that they come. And, uh, you know, you want to make sure everybody has the opportunity to speak. Once in a while, somebody might push their button a little slow, you know, so you're moving ahead to the vote, and yet you want to make sure they get a right to speak. So once in a while, you have to back up a little bit. But by and large, everybody has hit the speak button that wants to speak on a bill, and you just take your time working through them. Representative Kretschmar, uh, you were the speaker in the 1989 session, North Dakota's uh, centennial year. And things up on the speaker's platform were a lot, there was a lot less technology to deal with. What was it like uh, doing it back then? Well, there... Each of a, there was a board so we could see which members wished to speak on a bill or on a matter, and we would call them. Uh, I would uh, I would have a pad and I'd make a list as the lights came on, and that's the list I'd follow. I did have a uh, deal that if the majority or the minority leaders on the floor requested to speak, I put them at the top of the list. But generally, I followed the the list that I had made and uh, let everyone speak as they wished. So you uh, wrote this list down? It wasn't? I, I okay. did, yes, on a yellow pad. And what, uh, what was it like sitting up there and having the view that you have? Well, it was, you know, a really a fine view of the house. I could see all the members, and I could, uh, you know, see which ones wanted to speak, and, uh, well, by looking at the board. 
and it was, you know, a great view of the House of Representatives, in my judgment. Did you ever um, uh, catch somebody like sleeping or not paying attention, or? <laughs> well, you always see a few. I probably have done that myself when I was a member of the when I, as a member of the House. I don't believe I ever nodded off when I was speaker. Okay. Uh, people were watching me for that. I know that. Well, when you were speaker, there were these enormous paper books uh, in front of the in front of each representative. You didn't have laptop computers, and they kept track of bills by having these enormous uh, books the with comp compilations of the bills. Did it make it hard to see see people? No, generally they were the people were be a little taller than their books, or they could maybe hide if they wanted to. But you could generally see all of the members, and of course, when any member wished to speak and was called upon, that member would stand up and use the mic to speak. What did you enjoy the most about being speaker? I think uh, the uh, ability to kind of uh, lead the house and do things. In in my time as speaker, the speaker had a little more power than the speaker has today. And I, I named the committee chairs, the standing committee chairs. And uh, I, the majority leader didn't uh, veto any of them, so we got along. And in, in during the 90s, the speaker's power was reduced by changes in the rules of the House. And I think maybe uh, I'd like to go back and give the speaker a little more power in our, in our sessions. Whether that will happen... It, you know, it hasn't happened yet, maybe over the next biennial or two, three, or four biennial, it might. But today, the speaker in our system does not have a great deal of power uh, to uh, name committees or to uh, uh, be the most powerful person in the House, as many state legislatures in our country have, where the speaker is really the power person in the House. In our system, the Majority leader is the most powerful person in our house. I'd like to ask all, all three of you gentlemen this. Did, do you get folks who are get you mixed up with the Speaker of the U.S. House, or, or do they think that you um, have more power than you do because the Speaker of the U.S. House has quite a bit of power? Well, I, I think maybe, Dale, what you hear more than that is like Representative Kretschmar said, in most other states, the speaker has a lot more power. So if you go to a meeting out of state or whatever and start discussing the duties of the speaker in the various states, um, you have the least amount of power probably of any. But the other thing that's so unique in North Dakota is all the bills have to come to a vote. Unless one's withdrawn, they all have to come to a vote. And, and you try to explain that concept to some of the speakers in other states who are used to throwing bills in a drawer and never letting them see the light of day. They don't believe you can run a legislature like that, but it works very well in North Dakota. So, what do you think of that, uh, Representative Drovdahl? Do you did you get that impression when you met, went to speakers' meetings that that uh, you had considerably less power than your speaker compatriots in other states? Uh, yes, uh, Rep uh, Senator Speaker uh, Devlin is correct in that, and I experienced the same thing. Uh, what they also found very surprising is that we change our speakers every two years. I think since the turn of the last century that's been a tradition it's not by law but it's been a tradition and of course that weakens the power of the speaker too as far as your first question uh whether people got mixed up at home whether With john was, boehner or someone like yeah, that yeah uh, i've never had that problem as speaker but as a representative i've ran across that problem a number of times over the year that somebody thought i was back home from washington or something but never as a speaker okay um the uh, Representative Kretschmar, you mentioned that the uh, Speaker used to appoint the committee chairman. As I recall, where this really came to a head was, uh, I think, during the 97 session, where there was a dispute between the majority leader at the time, whose name was John Dorso. He was a Republican from Fargo. And the Speaker, who was Clarence Martin, a, a Republican from Leffer, North Dakota. And there was some disagreement about the makeup of committees. Yeah. And, uh, and Representative Dorso, if I recall correctly, said... You know, I need to be. I need to have the power to appoint the committees, and he asked for the backing of the Republican caucus, and the Republican caucus gave it to him. Um, Representative Devlin, uh, would you like to have? I mean, do you think that the speaker has too little power in North Dakota's system? I, I don't know if it's too little power. It's just, you know, it's just different. Um, speakers, or at least I have been involved in in selecting committee as a member of the committee on committees, but you know, as 
as you mentioned, it was changed years ago, and um, certainly there's, you know, I think every speaker would like to do a th- few things different and probably have a little more power. But you know, the, the, the members have chosen that this is the way to go, and and I'm fine with it. I mean, there's a, typically a lot of competition for a speaker because it does turn over every two yeah. years. Uh, why do I mean? We discussed this subject with Representative Devlin, uh, Representative Drovdahl. Why did you want to be speaker, and, and Representative Kretschmer, why did you seek the job? What, what what appealed to you about it? Well, the reason I ran to be a representative to begin with is because I wanted to be involved in the decision making. And as speaker, you also serve on a, a large number of committees. Uh, whereas a representative, you serve on two interim committees. As a speaker, I served on six. And so there wasn't a lot of opportunity for me to be a chairman of any committee, unlike uh, many previous speakers. So I wanted to be a little bit more involved in the process and the management of it. And, and that helped me and encouraged me to run uh, I had been in the policy making ever since I came into the, the session in '93. It was my first session, and that was probably my primary purpose to run. Why did you, Representative Kretschmar? Why did you want to run for speaker? What did you find appealing I, about? The I time? had worked uh, for quite a few sessions in the leadership portion of the House. I was the assistant uh, majority leader for uh, four or five sessions, and I chaired the judiciary committee before session or two before I ran for speaker, but it was just to keep involved in the leadership of the House and to uh, do the things that the speaker should do. I enjoyed being speaker, but I uh, like to be a member of a committee, too, that's for sure. Uh, you are the assistant to Earl Strindon. What I was. was. What, was, what was he like to be, to, be the, to be the assistant to? Earl Strindon was one of the finest leaders that I ever served under because... Uh, he was a very hard worker. He knew state government inside and out, and he was a very fine legislator from his district. I've told people several times that uh, leaders of the quality of an Earl Strindon come along in a state legislature like ours maybe once or twice a century. And he was certainly the strongest leader that I've served under. Representative Drubdahl, did you have something you wanted to add to that? I had one other thing. You asked uh, Speaker uh, Devlin about uh, the duties and responsibilities and what's happening. As Speaker, I don't remember a lot about the session because you're so busy doing it. And, uh, but after the session, the privilege of going across the United States, representing both Republicans, Democrats, and the North Dakota legislature and the people of North Dakota was really an honor. And right now, with us being the number one state in the nation, uh, you, the people really look up to the Speaker of North Dakota or any representative coming from North Dakota, and, and that was quite an honor to, uh, to stand before people and say, I'm from North Dakota. Uh, Representative Devlin, you mentioned that you, you have to pay close, particularly close attention when bills are being presented because you're not on the committees that hear the bills. Do you, do you miss being a, on a committee? I, I do because I enjoyed the policy committees. You know, I just really enjoyed it. I served on human service every session I was there, and, and I missed that part of it. But you know, this is fine. It's just different, you know. So I, it, um, I, have, I have no problem with it. I, I missed it, but I enjoy li- listening to legislators from both parties get up and explain the bill, how it came out of committee, how it changed in committee, what, you know, what is involved in, in it at the stage that we're voting on it. You know, you, I listen to Gretsch, Representative Kretschmar as talking about making the, the notes, and most of our stuff is electronic now, except we, all, we keep track on paper of who has spoke because you're you're only allowed to speak twice on a bill you know unless you're the bill carrier or majority or minority leader so you know you keep track of all that on paper and and the timers are electronic uh, we have a time limit of 10 minutes the first time five the second time so you know you, you keep an eye on all that but it, on some of the bills that are maybe more controversial or more people have an interest in you need to keep close tabs on who's actually spoke on them do you um feel nervous sitting up there for one of a better term because everyone's eyes is on you i mean you can't you know pick your nose or <laughs> burp or do something like that well I, you know I, I think i get nervous if something entirely new that i haven't seen before comes up uh, you know quite honestly when you're sitting as a member of the house you're not always a paying attention to what all the various orders mean you know and if somebody asks to bring something up on the eighth order whatever it is when you're first there the first week you have to think what all these things are but you know you you get through it i i think you know i would recommend it to veteran legislators that they run for speaker if the opportunity is there it's quite an honor and it's an enjoyable thing uh representative kretschmar and representative drugdahl how did you keep track of kind of the the ritualistic nature of the job i mean you have to know what the orders mean and there's certain things that you have to do after 
each bill is passed, and there's just a very strict procedure here, and, and, and I imagine it's hard to keep it all straight. Well, that, that gets pretty routine as long as you experience your work as speaker as you go along. And the, the, uh, your secretary brings you the things that you're supposed to do and this and this and this. And so it works out fairly well. And once you're kind of in the swing of things, uh, it goes along pretty, pretty satisfactorily, pretty swiftly. I think Bill summed it up really well. Uh, you get into routine after you've done it a while. You're, you're used to it, and it just seems to flow. And you do have a script, but after a while, you don't even really look at the script. It just flows. And one of the things you'd asked Bill earlier about uh, staying awake when you're up there, it's not quite so hard because all those legislatures down on the floor, they have their laptops, and they're looking at the bill. As a, as a speaker, you don't have your laptop. You have the two desks, and they don't have the bills on them, so you have to listen to that presentation to know what you're voting on. So it helps you stay awake. <laughs> um, one of the things that I, I personally notice about speakers is different, like how quick you wrap the gavel. Like Mr. Dev, Representative Devlin has very quick wrap. It goes bang, 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 and others are bonk. Bonk, bonk. I mean, is that something uh, that's conscious on your part? No, I don't think so. I think uh, um, e each speaker is going to develop their own style. I mean, my mine, I have the microphone on and just, you know, gavel in that three times or whatever. And, and uh, you know, it's just my style. I think each of us would have a different style up there. Do you have to avoid speaking to yourself? Yeah, probably. Because I remember uh, there's one, when Mike Tim was speaker, he... He had a habit of talking to himself, and it, when, when we told him about it, he uh, quit doing it. But, uh, in fact, he uh, described certain bills in very colorful terms, and uh, it was interesting. Um, so why do you think that no one runs for re-election as speaker? Is, is any, were any of you tempted to do this? It's, uh, I would say this is a tradition in our state uh, stronger than any rule or statute or constitutional amendment that the speaker serves one time and that's it. And there only been one gentleman who served as speaker twice in the early part of the, uh, right around the turn of the 20th century, and he did not do it in consecutive sessions. It was, there was one session in between. So that tradition is very strong. And I might add that the tradition of being the majority leader up until into the 50s, was very strong too that the majority leader only served one session. And sometimes the speaker and the majority leader would flip positions. But. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, Representative Kretschmar, I'm going to cut you off. This, we're talking about Representative Bill Kretschmar and Representative Skip Drovdahl and Representative Bill okay. Devlin, the new Speaker of the House. The legislature today is brought to you in part by.